Episode 108, Mom's Basement MMA. As always, I'm your host, Tyler. And today, I just kind of want to set the stage by telling everybody, in doing this podcast, I watch hundreds of fights. I have seen thousands of fighters. And the man I'm about to talk to, I think, is the most special fighter that a lot of people don't know about quite yet. Um, And I don't say this for the clickbait. I say it because I mean it. I really honestly believe that I'm looking at the UFC welterweight champion of the world. I think it's going to happen in short order. Uh, It's just a huge honor to have this man on the show once again, Solomon the Black Dragon Renfro. Sol, how are we doing, man? I'm doing great, brother. You know, not the greatest, but I am the greatest. So it's highs and lows, man. But I'm good overall. You, I... (sighs) there's just so much to bite off with you. And when I look at just everything, right. How far you've come in just a short amount of time you've been in this game blows me away. Um, You're a young dude. You're 24, 25 years old. You can barely rent a car and here you are. Right. And you're fighting guys that All of them have one thing in common. They all are older than you more for the most part. They all have way more experience than you for the most part. And you burn through these guys like it ain't nothing. And I got to ask, like the past two bouts that we've had, it's, it's just, there's been a lot of crazy stuff going on. We'll get into it a little bit, but you're a guy that wins and you knock people the fuck out. I, I don't know how else to say it. That's just, that's the way it is. Right. So just based off of everything that's been going on, like, I really want to know first and foremost, like, just how are you doing with all this adversity that's gone on? Like, there's a lot to bite off here. How do we like accept this for what it is and kind of move on? Yeah, man, honestly, for me, I'm just being cup half full, you know, with everything, you know, I'm just being cup half full. It was always hard for me to find opponents, you know, so now that I got a few losses on my record, man, um, it's going to be easier for me to get opponents and I'm able to run through some guys. You know, I was hard for me to fight often because a lot of people didn't want to fight me. So it took me a long time to get fights. So I feel like I'm going to get a few fights. Um, people would think, think people think shit's sweet right now. So I'm going to let them know it ain't. And I'm going to go out there and take care of business, man. I'm going to win fighter year this year, no doubt. And I, I believe I'm going to be signed. Sometimes you zig when you should have zag and shit happens when you're going for it. And, you know, I'm a guy that put my heart in my sleeve with everything that I do when I walk, when I talk, when I speak. You know, when I fight, when I love, whatever, my heart is on my sleeve. So sometimes we have your heart in your sleeve doesn't go as well as it could you know so but it, it is what it is man you live and you learn and uh next time just be a little bit more patient i feel like i was way better than the guy but you know he landed a shot and you know he came he came away with the victory congratulations to him and his team i still feel like i'm the better fighter I feel like nine times out of ten i whooped his ass but that night was his night and it is what it is you know i'm going forward i'm just gonna be great i didn't think the last bout was like bad i uh, here's what i saw so i've watched this fight probably three or four times You've probably watched it three or 4,000 times, but here's what I see, right? Here's what I've seen. He throws the head kicks. You're blocking them all. You're walking him down. You're starting to punch him. He's starting to like feel the the power, right? I felt like I start seeing the tides slowly start to shift and then zig instead of zag that, and that, and that was it. Like that's, I felt the momentum start to change. I saw it. I, I saw it change. And um, it was just unfortunate it went the way that it did. But, hey, I'll give that man his due. Um, all respect to him. The one, the biggest uh, thing, biggest compliment I could give him is I think he took his victory in grace. I thought he acted like a professional. Not everyone's, not everyone's like that, man. 100%, man. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I mean, we were both professional all week. Like I said, I don't ever have beef with nobody. Mm-hmm. When I'm talking, I'm just saying what I feel like is going to happen. I'm a competitor first and foremost. So if I feel like I'm going to win, I'm going to say I feel like I'm going to win. That's it. If you're afraid to say that, then, you know, you're not what you say you are. You know, how, how can you believe you're the best in the world? You're afraid to even say it. If you really? don't think you're the best in the world, like, I don't think you really have a business doing you the, what yeah, you do. You, should, you shouldn't be doing what you do, you know? So that I just, you know, I walk the walk and I talk the talk and, you know, sometimes you got to eat shit. <laughs> it is what it is, man. But, you, uh, you know, going forward, like I said, I'm just going to be greater than great. And, you, it, you know, I'm happy for him that he landed a good shot. But, I, like, I wasn't out. You know, I wasn't, like, out of it. That's why I was mm-hmm. so bad, upset about, like, people are saying it was early. It wasn't early. I feel like it was a little bit early just because the ref told me he was going to – three. he said, listen, backstage, he was like, fighter, I'm going to tell you guys three times if you're in trouble, fighter, defend yourself. He didn't say shit to me. That's what I was saying to him. Like, you didn't say nothing to me, bro. Like, 
come on. I was conscious enough to say that, you know, my, I know he was on top and I was getting ready to just roll over and, you know, finally hopefully get up, which I felt like I was going to do and just get back to work. But it is what it is. Shit happens. But I, I wasn't out, man. Like I wasn't out. Like out to me is like, you know, out to me is like when you got two, when you in a club and you got a bunch of bad chicks around you, you know what I mean? You having a good time, you having some drinks, right? Then boom, I wake up, it's two chicks in my bed. I'm like, whoa, how did I end up here? That's out. I've been like that before. You know what I mean? That's blacked out. Yeah. I wasn't like that. I knew everything that was going on. You know, in that situation, I didn't know how I got in the bed. In this situation, I, I knew how I was in the ground. I felt that. I seen everything that happened. You know, just, it is what it is though, man. So, you know, going forward, you gotta be more patient. You know, that's, that's it. You know, I'm to take it for granted. I'm not going to take it for granted. Uh, you know, it's a victory. It's a victory for him, but uh, I know I'm better and uh, I'm just going to show that. I'm just going to show that. I'm, I'm, no, I'm number one, man. You guys are going to see that. After the fight, you and Mike were talking. And for people who don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Saul's teammate, Mike Trezano. He's a guy I'm a, a, another big fan of. Uh, that guy's incredible, but that's a story for another day. Uh, what, were you, what were you talking? What were you saying to Mike? Uh, I would just, I would just say, man, like this is some bullshit. Okay. <laughs> like, man, this can't be. I like, bro, this can't be happening right now, bro. Like, this went the worst way it could possibly go. That's what I'm saying. That's probably what I said to him. I was like, bro, this went the worst way it could possibly go. I envision this shit so differently. That's what I'm saying to him in the cage. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, damn, in Buffalo, in the hometown, in front of everybody at LFA. Like, fuck, man. Mm-hmm. And it's like I'm in such good shape. Everything was perfect. Camp was perfect. Weight cut was smooth. You know, everything was good, man. I have no excuses. Just shit happens. Even shit is act. Uh, it just, it happened, bro. You know, he's lucky that it didn't go past, but hey, he, he beat me fair and square. That's it. You know, it was just his night that night. All um, we can do. Yeah, I'm going to run right through him. All I can do now is just all I can do. And I'm going to do all I can do. So. Are you on a, um, are you on a suspension right now? Yes. And yes. Okay. Yes. Short though. 30 days, 30 days. So I'm fighting again in April. Okay. So you're you're already in shape i don't think there's such a thing for you as like a fight camp per se because i see you you're in there every day every day is like a fight camp. i was was training i was training not the day after but the day after the day after Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so the fight happened on friday i was training excuse me i was training again on sunday you know so um you know my manager right was right with me literally the next day figuring out a game plan going forward shout out to my manager aj at first round they're amazing Help me get sponsors, help me stay active. We're gonna make sure that we go to UFC and have a great career. So uh, AJ Arosa, that's his name. He's a he's a he's a dog, man. He's the best manager in the game for real. He's young like me, you know, he's tough, he's got swagger, and uh, you know, we're gonna take over the world together. So shout out to them, man. So, but anyway, next day we were right on it. We were right on it. Um, coming up with a game plan, coming up with what we're gonna do, watching the film, figuring out what we did wrong, going over what we could do better going forward, and like that's it, man. We're attacking it. I'm not gonna fucking lay around and just let this shit sit on me like. Whatever, I lost. Is it gonna sit Zach? For all the haters, all right, you guys got one. But now I experienced all the lowest lows of the sport. So now it's time for me to experience all the highest highs. So big fuck you to all you guys. All love to everybody that support me. Let's do it. Talk to me, Saw, a little bit. There you have a it's an interesting story, and not everybody knows about it quite yet. Um, so I have to ask, like after the bout. Um, there's a video of you that was posted up on your IG and you're basically just telling everyone that, hey, like, listen, you know, hats off to the guy. I lost it is what it is. But you're like holding a white rose. I know the story behind this. I think it's pretty cool. And I'd like you to be able to kind of like explain to people who are just seeing you for the first time or maybe they just now find out about you. Like, what is the significance of all that? Like, what does that mean? Why is that so important to you? Um, man, so the rose, uh, <clears throat> when I was a kid, I had a woman that used to take care of me. She was an Asian woman. and She grew roses. And uh, I used to be afraid of like thunderstorms and it just gave me like a lot of anxiety. I was just like, I always stress out, like rain and thunder. It just gave me, for some reason, I always freak out. And one day she took me outside in the rain and the thunderstorm and brought me to the, ro- the garden of her roses, you know, and I, I never forget that smell. And she got me to smell them and, you know, pick some up and it just brought a calm to me. So ever since then, whenever there was like moments of, you know, uh, high adrenaline, high paced moments, moments where I have, have to, you know, have a lot of pressure per se on me. It's not really pressure, but pressure. Um, I like to smell roses, you know, to just remind me to stay calm and relax. And I was smelling roses backstage. You know, everything was smooth, man. Everything was smooth. It just, it just shit happens. But yeah, I keep the roses with me, man. You know, I'm a king, man. I know you are. I know you are. And what's so, I, I honestly do believe like 
uh, maybe this sounds kind of hippie of me to say, but I do believe everything in life happens for a reason. And one thing that people never, I, I looked this up. I spent some time looking this up. Daniel Cormier, Rafael Dos Anjos, uh, Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, you know what they all have in common? What? They've lost two fights in a row. Right? Like that, yeah. nobody matters. It, like none of that shit matters. Like at the end of the day, what only matters is how you find yourself on the other side. Now the, what's left is another fight. There's always going to be another fight. So, you know, it's right. one of those things. I like your attitude where it's like, it'd be really easy to get caught up in a funk. It'd be really easy to like get down. And I, I talked to another one of your teammates. I talked to Melissa not that long ago and I was just like, Number one, is he okay? And she's like, yeah, he's fine. He'll be good. I'm like, okay. Because I, I was really mad. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie, man. I was really pissed off. But I was like, yeah. I just want to make sure, I just want to make sure he's okay. And, he's, and she's just like, listen, he's the type of guy that give him a couple days, but he'll be back in the gym on like Sunday or Monday. And then that's exactly what you said you did. You went back to the gym. You're there Sunday, Monday. And, and, and so the question I have for you is like, in your mind, what's next? We got a few, we got a suspension that we got to get through, but you want to fight again. You're, you're in shape. I know you're ready to go. Like, do you have something in the works that you could talk about? Do you have your options open? Kind of like what um, on your mind for spring? Nothing that I can necessarily talk about, like the promotion mm -hmm. or necessarily the place, but I do have an idea date. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the end of April to, uh, you know, have take another fight, take victory. So I plan on, you know, having a having a Renfro show go on tour. You know, I'm gonna fight all over UFC Fight Pass. That's the goal. I'm gonna take over UFC Fight Pass, win five of the year for UFC Fight Pass, and then get my shot in the UFC and go take over the world. That's it. So what I plan on doing is fight in April, the end of April, then coming back in June, and then coming back in August at LFA in Buffalo, do it right this time, knock somebody the fuck out, put a highlight reel on. And then uh, you know, probably fight the tennis series in, in the fall or just get the car to the UFC. But uh, I'm gonna I'm about to go on a fucking tear, man. I'm in great shape and just shit happens. I feel like I didn't even fucking fight. It sucks, you know. But it is what it is. You save me to the fucking zag, and all I can do now is go forward and be great and just show people that I listen. I'm greater than great. You know, people people want to see our response to adversity. People think that shit was easy for me for whatever reason. I don't know why. Came up in the trenches and I also fought on safe MC the whole time. But I don't know why. But it is what it is. So we're just gonna show them. I'm gonna show them how it's done, man. I did. My story is gonna be a story for people to look at. And be like, look, he did it. He fought adversity. He just kept saying, he kept manifesting. He just did it. He visualized it. And he fucking did it. No matter what. He didn't take no for an answer. But that's me, man. I'm not about to sit around and fucking bitch and moan. Like, yeah, I was sad that night. I was sad the next day. But, you know, I, I started to realize, man, just the way I am, it's, this is bigger than me at this point, you know? And I'm I'm not nowhere near where I'm going to be at. But I know I'm I know I'm changing lives. I'm, I'm affecting lives, man. I, right after the fight, I walked out. Some random guy came up to me and gave me a big hug. And he's like, I just want to let you know, man, you're the reason that, you know, I didn't commit suicide last year. And I'm like, what? Whoa. Like, so after he said that, literally everything was put into perspective for me. You know, and then also when I came out, I had so much love from all the fans out there. Man, people wanted to take pictures with me. All my friends and family were coming up, you know, to hug people, hug me and, you know, say, it's all good. Even a bunch of random people, you know, I took so many pictures. It showed so much love. Um, you know, this is bigger than me now. You know, I, I'm, Renfro Nation is a true thing. And, uh, um, Sorry. It's Can okay. you see me still? Yep. Yeah. I got you. Uh, yeah. Renfro Nation is a true thing and uh, it's, re it's really growing. And I'm so grateful for all the love and support that I have. I'm grateful for every like, every comment, every share, every person that buys a t shirt, buys a ticket, watches the fucking highlight reel, says we will win, posted that shit, write a hashtag, Black Dragon, you know, King, whatever the fuck they're writing. I'm grateful for every bit of the journey, man. And like I said, our experience are the lowest lows of the sport. So now it's time for me to experience the highest highs. The fan base in general, and now I'm speaking as a fan of you, we are that way because you're relatable. We can relate. A lot of us can like relate to your story in our own small way. Like you're a type of kid where nothing in life was like handed to you. You've had to like scratch and claw and fight and work and work and work probably harder than everybody else just to get where you are. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Like for me, like taking it personal for me, dude, I started this up. I didn't fucking know nobody. I didn't know any, I didn't know shit about anything, man. But you know what I had to do? I worked, I put in the fucking time 
and I work and nobody outworks me, dude. Nobody outworks me at this. Uh, and that's why, you know, people ask me like, yo, like I want to do what you do. And I'm just like, okay, well then fucking work. Like, I don't know what to tell you. You need to fucking work. That's it work. And uh, that's what you're all about to me is somebody with a really high work ethic that is always grinding and, and, and is never satisfied. And I'm very similar. That's it. That's all it is, man. You know, and I, I just want to be, you know, uh, uh, inspiration for people um, to say that you can really do anything you put your mind to. And I put myself out there from day one. Day one, I'm going to write I'm going to go. Day one, I'm going to write I'm going to take over the UFC. So day one, I've been getting people talk shit, laughing at me, pointing fingers. So it is what it is, man. I'm, I'm happy to be in a position that I'm in because now I get to show people what being great really is. You know, being great isn't just always going out there getting W's and just having a smooth ride. That's not being great. That's easy. No one wants to hear that shit. It's not a good book. It's not a good movie. No one wants to write that. No one wants to read that or watch that. You know, you want to see a good movie when there's have adversity, highs and lows, and you watch the champion go through it all and then come come on on top. And that's me, man. That's me. You know, so the, the Renfro story is still being written. It's going to be a great story to read. When I stand and take over the world, I mean that shit, man. And I'm, I'm going to make it happen. I uh, am really... I wouldn't want to be the next guy that you that has to fight you. <laughs> nah, he's fucking dead. He's a dead man. All love to him, you know what I'm saying? But whoever it is, I'm laying him clean the fuck out. Whatever it's going to be. Listen, I'm not going to lie. Lately, I've been fighting a little too singular. I know I got the best hands in MMA. That is true. I got the very best hands of all MMA, weight class, pound for pound, whatever the fuck. I'm number one when it comes to hands. I don't care what y'all saying. Holloway, all oh, I love, bro, but I'm better. Shane, you too. I love you, bro. I'm better. <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, listen, when it comes to MMA, though, I, that's what I do best. I mix it up the best. And I haven't been mixing it up. I just been mainly just going out there boxing a lot. So for me, you guys will see a lot more of me adding, blending the wrestling a lot more. My ear didn't get like this for no reason, you know? So uh, blending a lot more wrestling, a lot more kicks. Uh, I'm not the Black Dragon for no reason, you know? I was doing Jeet Kune Do my whole life. So um, I'm going to just go back to doing full-on MMA. You know, I feel like I've been just real, a little bit similar in my approach. So it's been guys have been trying to game plan me with the kicks. They're like, let's come out and kick him because he's trying to box us. And, uh, you know, going forward, I'm just going to be all the way open like, like I was before. You had me undefeated. So we're back to it. I want to kind of like pivot a little bit and ask you a personal question. And it, it, it has nothing to do with fighting. I think of like just talking to all you guys, it's like there's a certain like sense of like vulnerability, right? You go out there and you're like looking into another man's soul when you see when you're watching him fight. Um, yeah. it, 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 it's, I, I can't really explain it. I, you know, and I'll never understand cause I'm never going to be a fighter, but I, I just sense that I sense like that vulnerability and like, you're looking at two guys, it's a fight. It's like the, in modern times, right. It's the closest thing right. to a fight to the death that yeah. exists now. And there's right. something special about that. There's something primal about that too. And it's two men enter one is like on top of the world. The other one feels like shit every time, every, every time. Right. Uh, and, yeah. And when you're winning inside the cage, there are other people that I think you kind of people like dehumanize you for a little bit. What I mean by that is like you win, you win, you win. So it's like, Oh, well shit must be going easy yeah. for this guy. Yeah, his life like, is good. Yeah. Right. Life is good. Like he's not a normal dude like the rest of us. And that's not true. Like, that's just one side of you that we see for, you know, five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever the case may be. But like, you're a regular dude, just like everybody else. And so I wanted to kind of pause and like, ask you, it's like, when you step away from the cage and all that other stuff, like, what is it that, that you do to take care of yourself? Like, I'm talking not necessarily physically, but also like mentally, like, what are some of the things that you do? And what other things are you interested in that have nothing to do with fighting? Gotcha. Uh, so I guess for me to like calm down often, like I go chill by like a large body of water, whether it be a lake, you know, ocean, a pond, or somewhat large, <laughs> uh, whatever, you know, just to mm -hmm. sit by the water, and just, it, it just brings me a calm, you know, smell flowers, as you guys know. Um, when it rains and snows, I literally love to just look out the window and just look, be in it, like maybe sit in my car, listen to some good music, chill in it. Um, I also sometimes fuck around, write some poetry, man. I color, I draw, 
I paint and I try to be artistic every way possible. And I try to just, you know, do every art. Um, I'm getting more into yoga. Uh, and I'm just always working on myself, man. I'm trying to be a better person. Like I always say, I be a better fighter, better student, better brother, better lover, better man all the way around, better friend, you know, better teacher, all that. So yeah, I guess, I guess that's mainly it, man. Those are like the main things I do. Uh, I don't really watch too much TV, to be honest. Uh, I listen to podcasts, um, but that's pretty much it. I read quite a bit. Do you watch I read, fighting? I watch fighting, yeah, but not to calm down. You know, I watch fighting as if it's like his homework. So I, after a day of training, I would make sure I watch a fight at night, at least. At least one fight at night, but usually about five, you know, or some type of film, whether it's old school boxing, you know, whether it's old school Muay Thai or new boxing, new Muay Thai, wrestling, Division One, Division Two, Division Three, fucking jujitsu tournaments, like, I'm, I'm just in it. I love combat sports all the way around. Like, I genuinely love this shit. Like, it's, I, that's why I always say true love story, you know, because that's what it feels like to me, man. It's like a love story. I'm just like, I ever think about fighting. It's like that girl that you think about when, like, you first had a crush in school. You go home and you fucking take the long way home just to see her. And you're always thinking about her all the time, like, no matter what. Even if she was mean to you that day, you're still thinking about her, you know, like, always, always, always. So that's why I compare it to, like, a love story. Because it's, like, the truest form of love to me, possibly, I ever felt in my life. So... You know, except for the whole contender series fight where I felt like fighting was always true to me, and that's the one time that it wasn't. Um, besides that, man, fighting doesn't lie. You know, sometimes the judges lie, but that wasn't fighting. That was the judges. That was bullshit. But it was. Yeah, um, fighting don't lie, man. Fighting, fighting doesn't lie. So that's why. That's why I love it. It's just so true. It's pure. It's pure, man. It's the purest form of love that I've ever felt in my life. In in my life, in general, mother, family, love, all that shit, like. Fighting is the truest form of love. I felt so far until I have a kid. Hopefully one day I really get to feel it or, you know, I get a wife, you know, I get to feel it. Um, but I feel like fighting is just the most pure form of love that I, I've ever had in my life that you could ever have. So that's why I compare it to people that don't know what it's like, how it feels to be a fighter, why you want to be a fighter. Imagine like how you felt when you met your wife or your husband, your significant other, or maybe, I don't know, I haven't had a kid yet, but from what people tell me, when it's like when you have a kid, it's just, it's just your everything. You love it. You, you No matter what happens with it, you still love it no matter what. The good times, the bad times, the highs and the lows, you just, you're deeply and madly in love, or dangerously in love, like Beyonce would say, you know? <laughs> so, for real, though, I'm seriously, man. I'm serious, man. It's, it's like, I have a deep, deep love for this, it. a deep, deep appreciation for it. It's changed my life. It brought my life on the right path. But before I was doing this, I was doing a lot of bullshit. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, getting in trouble and whatnot, you know? People, people don't need to know all that, but... <laughs> I got you. <laughs> you know? So, so here's what it is, man. I want, I have to tell you, man, like, um, I've seen all your fights and I like the fight. I like the Parsons fight. I thought it was a good ass fight. I liked it, man. I, I thought I, so too. I mean, I hurt my hand the first one. You still see it. Look at this shit. Yeah. My yep. thumb's still fucked up, man. And then I, I lost my tooth. Also, no one knows that either. So, I mean, I, the UFC came out with the article and, you know, said that for the last fight. But, um, yeah, man, I hurt, I messed up my hand and I hurt my tooth. And also, Johnny Parsons never even fought at 155. He never even fought at 170. That's the first time fighting at 170. So for Dana White to get up there and say that, I was like, whoa. I mean, it is what it is, man. You know, it's going forward, it just is what it is. I just got to whoop ass and be great, and that's it, you know? But that's, yeah. I mean, so, I so feel you, like- So wait, honestly, you lost the tooth? Like, I didn't know that. that. Like the, yeah, I spit it out. Like this. You watch the fight back. I spit it out like the second or third round. You can watch the fight back, you'll see it. Um, I don't remember what round. I'm pretty sure it was the second or third. It definitely wasn't the first, because- Price was smooth. I'm pretty sure it was the third, honestly. Pretty sure it was the third. But Lyman good. So I was training before the fight, man, right? This is like a week and a half out. And I spar. Lyman comes in like, yo, you want to spar? I'm like, I got to fight soon. He's like, I'm going to go light. I'm like, hey, you know Lyman. He's a fucking brute. I love him. He's a fucking cyborg. Literally, that's his nickname. But he's a fucking dude. That's like an action figure. He's gigantic. Yeah. So we're sparring light. And this dude hits me dead in the mouth and knocks my tooth loose. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> Come on, bro. So then I go to the dentist, and the dentist tells me, like, all right, listen, we can glue it, but you, sh you can't spar anything soon. Obviously, I can that can't happen. I'm like, whatever. It is, it is. So it was already, like, super loose, like, going into it. So it kind of came out. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to see UFC. But then I didn't, but I will. So it will be fine. It is what it is. You know, right now, my dentist is hooking me up. <laughs> Shout out to M Dental, man. They show love, man. They really got me right. So uh, Dr. Service, he's a man. Well, uh, I, I liked the fight personally. Um, we won't talk about the uh, what happened afterward. That's a that's a story in and of itself. Um, <laughs> I was really 
Yeah, I, 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 I probably flipped out more than you did, quite honestly. I was, I was hot, man. I was hot for a while. I cried like a, I cried like a baby. I'm not gonna lie. I did cry. You have every but, right to. You have every right I mean, to. It was, it was, it was some shit, man. Damn. It was the happiest moment and saddest moment of my life at the same time. Right. Like, Cause I walk out, I'm so happy. I'm like, damn, I'm finally here. That damn. I'm trying to look at him. I'm trying to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I don't look. <laughs> <laughs> cage and i'm like you know it's time to do my thing <laughs> i'm finally in there and then uh i go out there do my thing i hurt my hand in the first round you know i hurt my hand i don't know if i don't know if it was a punch or i feel like it was a punch that i threw at the body I hit an elbow on my swell my thumb up or something like that mm-hmm. um but then i took him down i went to go collect the other arm and my hand felt like it was on fire like i went back to the corner and between the first and second round i'm like i think i am i think i broke my hand you know like shut up sit down you know shut up you gotta fight like what are you gonna do yeah <laughs> right so right, right. Yeah, so go out there, you know, second round, my hands hurt the whole time. I'm like, you know, I'm going to take him down and, you know, hold him down and try to land a few strikes. But it was bad because with this hand, I couldn't really post him or hold him because this hand was hurt. And then, so if I tried to hit with this hand, it's going to get right out. I hit with this hand, I'm going to fucking hurt my hand. So I was like, uh, I kind of got to just hold him here, you know? I should have mm-hmm. probably threw elbows, but I wasn't really thinking, I guess, that clear. Um, and then going to the third round, I'm just thinking, you know, I got to hit him more than he hits me. As long as I do that, I'm going to win. And that's what I did. And what the fuck? I don't know, bro. It is what it is. Going forward, just got to make sure I knock these dudes the fuck out. That's it. Um, You won the fight. I don't care what anybody says. Um, If you don't believe me, um, what, you know, honestly, just watch the fight on mute for yourself and you make your own decision. But um, you won the fight. Uh, and I'm not trying to, like, talk shit about Parsons. He's a good fighter. Uh, but you did enough to win the fight, man. <laughs> You, you yes. didn't you did enough you did absolutely did enough and so when you think back on just all those experiences that you had and just the rest of what the year looks like you're on the radar like you don't get a call like that you don't get on that show unless they're already looking at you and even if things don't go right on the show like they did that doesn't mean they're not going to call you back. Like they know who you are, and when the next guy at and they, they 70, know I'm a fucking stud, bro. Oh, we love. Like, listen, it is what it is, man. I'm like, and people are saying be humble. And I'm a humble person. If you know me, I'm the most humble guy you can meet. I'm the same person I am to anybody and everybody. But I believe in myself, and I'm a fucking stud. I'm a fucking rock star. Like, I, I have that star. I know I do. I know I, it's just in me. It's been in me since I was a child. It's just always been in me. I'm a fucking. I know how to perform. You know, I just did you you saw the LFA fight, man. Even though it's fucking 40 seconds, the crowd went crazy when I walked. That's the biggest crowd they've ever seen ever. I mean, dude, come on. I'm not even in the UFC and I fucking got my blue check. I don't know why. I don't know how that even happened. But I woke up one day and I have verified. I was like, oh cool. That means people, you know, they're behind me. They they get me. I have a following. It's gonna mm-hmm. grow even bigger just the more eyes I have on me. So I just gotta perform. And that's what I will do. Shit happens. I this is like the universe testing me. Like, do you really want it, Solomon? Like, do you do you really really want it? Do you, how bad do you really want it? Cause it's like, let's see, let's uh, let's let you win and then let you fucking, you know, get robbed. Let's let you fucking go out there and, and get embarrassed in front of your fucking hometown. You know, let's see how bad you really want it. And now that I went through the worst of the worst, the universe is gonna be wide open and I'm gonna get the best of the best for the rest of my career. And that's it. And, and go. And, 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 and I see it all happening for you. I I, I really do. Um, it's just one of those things. Like you're too good. And you're too passionate about this sport for for you to not be in the UFC. I you'll be there. I know you will. And um, you talked about like, oh, I want to fight. You know, in the spring, in the summer, in the fall. Well, you might only fight one more time, and then I and then they're gonna be like, yo, like uh, we need you. Yeah. Like you're, you're. I know that's a reality too. I know that's a reality too. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not waiting for them. And the Renfro show is on tour, so if they pick me up. Then I'm gonna go out there in the UFC and whoop ass and then keep fighting anyway. I'm gonna keep the same schedule, you know. It ain't, it ain't gonna change whether or not. Well, I, don't, I just say from more promotion, you know. I'm open to the UFC signing me sooner than that, but I'm not trying to go nowhere else except the UFC because I want to be the biggest name in the sport, not just the biggest name just for like famous reasons. Definitely not that, but I want to be considered the most dominant athlete. Period. And when I get to the UFC, I'm not fucking losing. And that's it. What's could be even the UFC? Like 13 and 0. I could get 15. I get 15 and 0, 16 and 0 in the UFC. Why not? I'm only 25 years old, you know, and I feel like, um, to be real, from you know, no disrespect to him, but I feel like I fought harder competition outside the UFC than he did, mm-hmm. you know. So 
It is what it is. I'm, I'm on the right path. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, open up my arsenal a little bit. Start training with some guys in Vegas. Train a few guys in Miami. Um, but still, Tiger Showman's is home base, and I'm also gonna train in W Miami Man in Buffalo. Those are home base. Um, but I'm gonna go start wrestling with a few more guys. You know, maybe go to Edge Wrestling in New Jersey. Wrestle with some Olympians. Get my wrestling game back up. Um, increase my kicking game. But I'm at Tiger Showman's. You know, it's karate school, so we're nice on the feet with the hands and the kicks. Um, do more Muay Thai, and that's it, man. Open up. The fucking arsenal do what i do just go be great good things are coming i'm really looking forward to uh you being able to announce your next fight i i i want to see you get back on the horse i want to see i want to start seeing some bodies pile up and i know oh. that's gonna happen coming bro it's, it's already bodies piled up it's coming but it's a lot of bodies buried in the snow out here in buffalo you know what i'm saying you know so <laughs> yes sir uh but yeah man but man, the Renfro show is the Renfro show is taking over, man. So be it, so be on the lookout. I believe April, June, August, um, and then sometime in the fall. But we we about to run these W's the fuck up. And and the time to get on the platinum yacht is now, not not right tomorrow. Now. Oh, price is going up. Cause yeah, like well, there ain't gonna be room. There ain't gonna be room for you. So now's the time. Now's the time to get on board. And and throw your support behind my guy. Saul, before I let you go, I want to give you the opportunity to shout out um, any of your sponsors or any of the uh, your teammates, anything like that. Yeah, uh, man, I got a lot of sponsors. Hard to, I don't want to even forget some of them, but I guess one of the biggest ones, Seven One Six Mafia. Shout out to them. Shout out to WMMA. Shout out to Tiger Showman's. Um, shout out to my teammates. You know the uh, Hurricane Chains. We got Lyman Good, Jimmy Rivera. You guys, you know Melissa as well. Um, Ryan Burgos. Uh, Julio Arce, man, this was on Mike Trezano, obviously. Um, Pat, Patchy Mix, you know, that's my boy. Um, first round management, shout out to them. My manager, AJ, he's a dog. He's the best manager in the fucking game right now. Me and him are going to take over the game. Um, watch. You're going you're gonna to hear about us very, very soon. Um, and, you know, shout out to all my supporters. Shout out to yourself. Um, and everyone that supports me and that's behind me, uh, it's, it's going to be a great ride, guys. Stay tuned to fucking – uh, it's, about, it's about to be fun. We're, we're taking over the world, I promise you guys. And thank you all so, so, so much for your support. I appreciate it. And I'm so grateful for it. And uh, I'm not going to let you down. Saul, so, you, you are a gentleman. It's always an honor to talk with you. And I can't wait to do it again in the very near future. Solomon Renfro. <laughs> <laughs>